Jamaica is one famous predator who I met when I was a teenager. I met when I was a teenager. And in I yeah. But he's famous. Like everybody knows he's a predator. And they speak about him behind his back. And and then when I when I talk about him, people say, So why don't you report him? I'm like, to whom? I've been in his presence in political circles. The, the, the high ranking police officers were there and high ranking pol politicians were there. And there are his friends. Who do I tell on this guy? Who do I tell? Right now you know me and stop it. Tanya Stevens has spoken out on several occasions about the ordeal that she went through as a young teen growing up. Now, I've heard it many times, but yet every time that I hear Tanya Stevens talk about this ordeal, it sounds brand new to me every time. Why? Simply because when she speaks about it, you can hear the genuine concern in Tanya's voice that she has for young teenage girls these days who are still going through that very same situation. People, in this video that I'm about to show you, Tanya Stevens is having a conversation with Shannon Mack over there on Instagram. And Tanya is reliving her experience that she went through as a young teenager in the music industry. She spoke of being raped by a very popular entertainer. People, take a listen to what Tanya Stevens is sharing right here. Listen, Jamaica is a strange place, you know. Jamaica pretends to be the most religious place on the earth, the last bastion of morality. It's not. It's a festering third. There's so much wrong with us. And I am Jamaican and I love my country. And there's so many good people here, but there are also so many bad people. Here. Yeah. And the good people are enabling the bad people because they don't want us to speak about any of the problems. Because they, they're scared. No, they're pride. They have this false pride. Like, it's they can't wipe the dirty linen in public. It's fear. It has to be fear. The only I don't know. Just speaking up and telling the truth is fear of being looked at, is fear of being ridiculed, is fear of being, you know the minority versus the majority you know that's it, it's the it's the only thing to me is fear that would hold you back so you know so their fear supersedes their their will to do right by this child that they see getting molested like they see a big man with a little girl and them say yo them little girl let us love big man like what oh first of all the first time i got raped oh god i look like i'm coming from church yeah i can talk about it now i Honestly, it took a while to be able to say that without flinching. Oh. And this was somebody I trusted. It's not strange. It wasn't strangers who hurt me. This is somebody I trusted. So I was just coming in the music business. And I was coming from the country, moved to Kingston. I was, I was brought to my sister's house first as a babysitter um, for her daughter, my niece. And in, in the process of babysitting, um, she ended up sending me to a fashion design school in half a tree in Kingston. And I would go to school in the morning. I dropped my niece at her school. And, and then I go to my school three days a week. And then I go back to my niece's school and wait until her school is over. And then I bring her home. And I started on the mornings that I didn't have school. Because it was only three, three days per, per week school. Um, I started searching around for a student to go to. This is when I, I was just trying to break into the industry. And I found one at the top of Maxfield Avenue in Kingston, near Halfway Tree, new name music, Kester Brown Studio. Miss Don Henry was there at the time. And I started going there. Now, there was one artist there. Now, at the time, there were three big artists, and really huge artists in Jamaica. Shabarangs was the king. Pacha was the queen. She was next to Shaba. And then... There was another guy in next in line. Um, and he became my mentor. Uh -huh. He became my mentor and he, he used to call me his little sister and I believed it. I really believed it. So at one point when I turned 17, um, my big sister who I was living with um, said she didn't realize I was that young. She thought I was like turning 20 or something. So turning 17 mean, meant um, I couldn't go to the studio anymore. I was devastated because that was the only thing that in my life that was actually good. 
Right. And I went to the studio one last time and I told them, like, listen, I can't come anymore. My sister has forbidden me. Um, this is it for me. Guys, it was a nice, it was really nice. Um, and he, my mentor, said, no, man, you want me to come talk to her? And I'm like, you would? No, my sister, my auntie, every woman in my family loved him. So I was like, yo, surely if him come and talk for me. My good. Yeah. My mom good. So he said, yeah, man, of course, I'll come and talk to your sister. I'm like, oh, cool. So that evening he brought me home and he sat and he talked to my sister. And he took responsibility for me. As she said, she didn't think it was safe for a young girl my age to be out, which is a good, uh, it is a good concern and I appreciate it. Mm. And he took responsibility and she trusted him. And she gave me, gave me permission based on his taking responsibility. Shannon, her ass. When that man, find, he, first of all, he never made an advance. He only spoke of me as his little sister. He never made an advance, never not once. And I say that many times to reinforce the fact that there's no indication that there was any thought of that in his mind. Yeah. So he was moving house. At the time, I was fresh from the country. I don't know Kingston. I didn't know the geography of Kingston, right? Mm -hmm. And this is me just talking about how easily we accommodate rape culture in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So he was moving house. And I'm fresh from the country. I'm, I've never been a dunce. I wouldn't say I'm exactly naive, but I was ignorant of the, some ways of people. And like he'd done many times before, he offered me a ride home. So on the ride home, then he said he had to drop by his new place. Everybody knew he was moving. And he said he wanted to stop by his new place real quick and drop off something. Now, if I had known the geography of Kingston, I would have known something was wrong. Because my home was on the way to his new place. This is what I realized afterwards when I got to know Kingston well. So he said he wanted to drop it. And I was like, sure, why not? Why, why would I say no to you stopping along the way to drop off something at your place when this is your car and you're right? So he, he was going to stop by his place, right? Uh -huh. To drop off something at his new place that he's setting up. And then he drives to the place and he stopped outside of it. The, it I don't, it's kind of like I've not been able to go back there to look. Because psychologically, I just couldn't oh, handle God. it. But it's, a, it's kind of like a, it looked like a cross between a townhouse and an apartment building. Um, and he stopped outside of it on the curb. And I was sitting in the car and he jumped out and he started to run toward the building. And then he stopped and he looked like he was thinking. And then he came back and he said, so you don't want to check out the place? And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, man, come check out the place and you can give me some pointers and tell me what you think and what we can do with the place and stuff like, come in, man. And I was like, oh, cool. This made me feel valid because I really was his little sister. I was a part of his process and he wanted my opinion on his place. And I was like, cool. I can't, I can't lie. I was impressed. I was affected because it felt like, yeah. Um, this person actually saw me as as an equal, as a part of his circle. Yeah. And I went. On the outside, at the landing in front of his door, there were some people, see, there's a balcony, a, a little railing. So some steps going all the way up the building, and we, on the landing in front of his door, there were some people. I can't tell how many people, maybe about four, three, four people. There was a woman there, too. Um, and I said, good afternoon, and we went in the door. When we went inside of the door, he locked the door. And that made me kind of pause a little bit. I was like, well, but then I thought to myself, oh, Kingston, you know them still pure, pure criminal. <laughs> right. Pure criminal. So he locked the door and then he started to show me around. Girl, when we reach the bedroom, it's a full on assault. Full assault. When I see this man speaking you know, up, and when I see Jamaica big him up sometimes and they act like he's such an upstanding citizen, always a Christian man, he's a nice guy. I go bonkers because you see, no matter what nobody tells me, I know my experience. I was there. He was there. He knows my experience. We know what happened. Child, me defend myself. I was, I was about 95 pounds. It's a big diesel, man. Thick, so it's a muscle, nobody fat. And when he start beat me, 
I decide, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, you know, have to beat me. I give up. I ball for help, you know. I scream for help. I ball for rape. People there outside the door. You send me scream and ball for rape, and I know you're nobody answer. I just stop. Because what may I do? Wait until he, he, he kill me? May I get real licks? So I stop fight. I stop fight. And that continued for hours. For hours, I was locked inside of his new place that he was moving into and just violated for hours. And when me done, when him done, him hold me and lead me to the bathroom, put me in a shower himself and beat me. No evidence, no left. Me get a proper scrub. Proper, proper scrub. Who me did I go report him to? I, I, Remember me come there voluntarily, you know? Remember me ball for help and me ball for rape and nobody not say, you know? So who me did I report him to and who was going to be my witness? Remember, this is, this is a man who is adored by the 14 parishes and the diaspora. Who me I report him to? Me want upcoming artists. You hear what I'm saying about the girl that I'm going near Big Bill Cosby? So who may I report him to? Men are idiot. Now let me tell you the dialogue I had going into that experience. My big sister was a senior teacher at Ocheres High School and I used to live with her. And I used to sit around, hang around her and the other teachers. And one of the, her co-workers was the daughter of a judge, a magistrate. And I heard her say to the other woman, her daddy told her and her sister, if they got raped, do not go to the police, come to him. Because if they go through the system, they're going to be raped repeatedly by the system. That was the one dialogue I had in my head of reporting rape. I would never go to the police. Not with that in my head. And that was a judge. So I went home. I went home with a conversation. Now listen, when, when he finished and he made me beard, you know, and put me in one, one big t-shirt, his t-shirt, I had on a big old t-shirt. And I was just sitting in a corner. Hug me knee and just a ball. My ball until no tears now come like me dry. And he asked if I wanted to go home. And I said no. Because me, me never want to leave out until night. Me never want nobody to see my face. Like I felt so I felt dirty. I felt ashamed. I felt guilty. I felt like shit. And I knew that people were there when I went in. And I was hoping that they couldn't remember my face. And if I came out in the darkness, they wouldn't be there. And nobody would see me and I could just go home in anonymity. When I went home, I went to the shower again. And I showered. And I showered. I have no evidence. I have nothing. Who may I go to? I'm poor. And I went voluntarily. This is why you sometimes you see me fight, me argue with people. I'm going to fight violent with, with people where we speak out of their ass, you know, because they don't know. They sit over there in judgment and they speak on these girls and they don't know. You don't know what I feel like. You know what I feel like when I go home? Remember now, I live with a judgmental sister. I come from a judgmental family. I come from a family where I say I should have got college, although they have no money for pay for college. My family would have preferred that I went to college and indebted myself with a student loan. Than pursue my passion. And they made it very clear. Them tell me some I turn cruff, may I what list now? And some said iron balloon. I would never bust, so go get a real job. I couldn't go to them and tell them that I went to the studio and got raped. Could I? How me could I how, how would I broach that conversation with some people who already said that was what was waiting for me at the studio? So now may I come back and say you did right. Which meant I couldn't go to the studio anymore. And the studio didn't do anything to me. One man did. Student never do nothing to me at all. One monster did. And him do it repeatedly and people protect him. So, let me tell you. Further than that. I ended up back in the country. Um, at my mother's house. And I was trying to break into music just to see him. Because I felt like, you know what? I'm not going to allow this to deter me, no more than ever I have a reason to do this. And so I was back in the country, and in the country there are less opportunities to sing. Um, 
in the in the city i could go to the studios and record in the country we never had no studio so i was singing on sound systems i went to dances and i, I hope to get in via that route and i was i, I was kind of like a local celebrity in saint mary the parish i'm from um when i started getting put on posters i was like yeah all right girl come now you know music is a male dominated field so the majority of the people I was hanging out around was male. Um, I started to date a guy I knew since I was a kid. I know him from as far back as I can remember. And I confided in him. He used to come to dances with me too, with a bunch of us. And I confided in him and I told him what happened. What had happened to me in Kingston. And he seemed to empathize. Apparently, not really. Because he set up a train he set up a train so the second time i experienced that was actually a train oh my god <laughs> good people pick me do it you know upstanding so let me tell you the irony of this train it, it happened in a policeman's house son of a policeman yeah You have no idea. This and this is this is nothing. This is Jamaica. Everybody knows this story. Not mine. They know theirs. You'd be surprised how many girls experience this. I know. How many boys did this? I know. How many parents allow this? When this happened, I was actually hanging out with this guy I was dating, who I confided in, who I felt comfortable with because I had known him all my life. This wasn't a stranger. I'd known him. I don't remember not knowing him. And what and the, the other guys, uh, two of the other guys, I knew them from school. They went to other different schools. They, they went to a different school than mine. But we, we met up at like sport day events and stuff like that. I knew them. And I felt comfortable with them too. And they were my age. So I felt like surely I'm safe. Mm -mm, I wasn't. Not safe at all. Um, and this happened mm -hmm. hanging out with friends just you know, doing what normal teenagers do. First time was 17, second time 19. Oh my God. So the second time when this happened, and <laughs> people say, so why you never scream? Remember the first time I fought and I was beat up. Second time it was a few of them. One man beat me up. You think me I go fight a few men? I not fight a few men. All me I do, I just look for the one person who I trust the most and I say, why you do this to me? And I kept repeating that me can't believe and he wouldn't look in my face. He just wouldn't look at me. And they had, they did whatever they came to do. Mm -hmm. and that was it. Again, I couldn't leave until the night because this comes with an extremely large amount of just disgust. Like, it's not self-hatred, but it's like dirt. Just dirt. Like, I don't want nobody to see me like this. Because right now, I'm dirty. And again, I shower, shower, shower. And I left. When I left, it was night. Because I didn't want anybody to see me by day. So I left again in the night. And when I walked away from there, on my way to grab a, a bus to go home, um, I saw somebody I recognized. I have a sound system, so I know him because I remember my sing fan sound system. And he asked me where I was coming from. And I guess because it was just so new and I hadn't, I really didn't think of any kind of insulation for myself yet. I just opened my mouth and it just let out. And I told him everything. And he said, Come, me bring you to the station. And I said, No. And he said, What do you mean you know I'm going to the station? And I said, No, because. The house I was in belonged to a policeman. He was on duty. I was going to walk into the station and tell him. Maybe he locked me up for, 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 for breaking and entering any house. He never, he never invited me there. Would I go report his son to him? Do I trust reporting his son to him? St. Mary is a place where a young woman was stranded trying to get a drive. And she went to the police station to seek refuge. And, they, and the policeman raped her. You think me I go by police station and go tell one policeman saying son just uh, uh, assault me in a house, in a female house? What may I do that? 
So I went home. The, when I, the guy I was talking to gave me an advance notice because when I said I, I didn't want to go to the station, he said, oh, so you must have want it then. So I just shut up. After that, I shut up. I said nothing. I went home. I went home and about two days after I was at home, I was, first of all, I went home and I was just showering. Me just a beard, 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 beard. Me couldn't stop beard. Like, my beard, for days, me just a intermittent. Me just go, every time I think about it hard, me go back to beard again. And I was home. Everybody else was gone. And I was alone home. I'm here a, a, a car horn at my gate. I'm going to go and look and at the boy them. In a, them in a white car, I don't know what I sit down at my gate. I asked me if I'm all right. And I was so scared because I was home alone. I run back inside and lock up because I thought I, I thought there was going to be a repeat. I never have no escape route. Yeah. But luckily, they left. After that, I was home. Me stay home for months. Me just couldn't come out. Me never want to see nobody. Me never want nobody to see me. Yeah. I don't think people understand the, the psychology of this. That when they speak, this is why I keep saying, do not talk. If you don't know, don't speak. Just It's okay to be silent. Better to be silent than to cause more damage. Wait, I have so many questions. So, did you tell your mom? No. So your mom never knew. And your mom didn't, Not really. your mom didn't like suspect any weird behavior in you like that you changed? I don't know. She didn't say. But you have to understand too, you know. She came from a different time and she was brought up on different rules. She would come from a society where let, let me tell you, every time I've I'd heard anything like that mentioned, the sweet stigma was always placed on the victim. I remember one girl. That everybody used to point at and say, see the girl over them rape. Our family had to move her. I don't know if she migrated. I never saw her again. Never saw her again. There was another girl who got raped and then she started acting different. And everybody say, she mad out. And it's like, yo, boy, she just turned one piece of skittle, bomb. Like, skittle wasn't a word then, but it's like she turned over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's supposed to rape behavior that the, the lack of self-worth that comes from that violation. Because what it does is not physical. Enough. The biggest damage is not physical. Because at one point, you know how I used to treat myself? How I used to counsel myself to, 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 to save me from the brink of madness? One of the boys, one of them Monday, from the train, had a micro penis. And that is what I used to cheer myself up. Like, well, technically... It's one less person because he technically wasn't a part of it because he really had no penis. Oh my God. It's just the kind of madness that he used to bring me back from madness. And. Oh God. Let me tell you something. Every single time I went on the road and somebody said something negative, that made me feel like I was falling into a hole because I felt I had to go on the road. Yeah. It was always a woman. Women. I remember one time I went back to Fort Mary, which is where it happened. And I was walking on the street. And one girl was walking with another girl. I can't still remember her face. I can't even remember the second girl's face, but I remember the first one. She pointed at me across. She was at that, that, that for those who know Port Mary on the line. She did over the little harbor that street, the back of the clock, side of Jane. Over the side of the walk. And me, I come off of the bridge, come into the clock. And when I passed the gas station, I could hear her and she pointed and said, See the girl there? And that girl did them back to frontier. Loud. I remember like it's yesterday. May I tell you I can hear her voice and I can hear her face. A point. And she laughed. Remember, I didn't do nothing. You know? All I did was hang out with my friends. When I trust. This is the kind of narrative we're out there right now. In our society. And we accommodated. Now me know the question left in everybody's mind right now is who this person is that Tanya is talking about. And sure, we would love to know who it is, but I'm quite sure Tanya Stevens has her own reasons as to why she is keeping that name to herself.
Maybe it's for legal reasons. Who knows? But I am just hoping that Tania expressing her strength every single time and talking out like this empowers other females like you to speak out about your situation. Talk to me down below in the comment section. And ladies, listen. If you have been through anything like this, don't be afraid to speak out. Alright? Get your power back. Take your power back. This has been another one from Unstoppable TV. Like, share, comment, and definitely if this is your first time here and you have not yet hit that subscribe button, please consider hitting the subscribe button now and turn on all notifications. Once you upload a video, you will get notified. No matter what, don't make nobody stop you. I'm unstoppable and I'm out. Right now you know we unstoppable. Unstoppable.